Ebro says that a lot of this is because of a generational issue. This is what he's saying. And AOC is agreeing with this as well. She's saying it's a generational issue. And quite frankly, she says that criticizing the occupation doesn't mean that you're against Israel. This is what she's saying. This generational issue, she's saying that the younger Jews are saying that um, basically they agree with AOC. Is this a lie? Is, is she just um, spewing out of her mouth that, hey, the, it's the older Jewish people that are bad and the younger ones want, uh, you know, want to speak about this and get rid of this issue here? What, what do you think? What do you say to that? Well, there's a couple of comments. Number one, let me address the word occupation. The word occupation means that one government or one group is in territory belonging to someone else and oppressing them. There are two areas under discussion. There's Gaza and the West Bank. Gaza has not one Jew in the entire territory. Not an Israeli, not a Jew from elsewhere in the world, and as best as people can figure out, there's no Christians and there's no Muslims that oppose the government. If they did, they'd be dead. So let's stop the word occupation when it comes to Gaza. Anyone that uses that word is an idiot. Okay? Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, in the West Bank, where a fairly large number of Muslims live, they used to be citizens of Jordan. And it became Jordan after 1948 when Jordan invaded the territory that was supposed to be part of Israel. Well, Jordan never gave it back. They kept it until 1967 when, in the Six-Day War, Israel conquered the territory that was previously assigned to them under the 1917 Balfour Declaration and the later UN partition plans. So Israel even though they conquered the territory in a defensive war, has given over control of the vast majority of the West Bank to the Palestinian Authority. It is not occupied. Jews are not allowed in most of the towns, and with the exception of some military outposts, it's all Muslim. It's all Palestinian. I don't understand the word occupation in the sense that it's the wrong word. There's a conflict and a disagreement over how and where it should be governed. But this is nothing more, nothing less than the Joseph Goebbels propaganda school being applied in modern day. Meaning, Goebbels, as your viewers I'm sure know, was Hitler's propaganda minister. And he said, tell a big lie, tell it often enough repeat it constantly, and eventually it becomes the truth because people don't know any better. The other thing Goebbels said, which I think is really relevant today, he said, give me control of the media and I will make the people into sheep. Meaning, if he can control what is announced as news, he can get the people to do virtually anything. So these two concepts by one of the most murderous regimes in the history of planet Earth is how this story has been perpetuated. Germain, people are being lied to every single day by people like AOC and this newscast guy, uh, the black nationalist radio host that you mentioned, um, radio station 97 in the East mm -hmm. Coast, and he keeps telling the same lie and people believe it. It's sad, it's pathetic, it is a lie, it's not true, and that's why it's important that you and I are able to get the truth out. And for anybody that's really wanting to know the truth, I would encourage them not to believe Jermaine, not to believe Barry, get on a plane and go to Israel and see it for yourself. You'll see one of the most incredible countries in the history of the world, flourishing, prospering, you can walk anywhere, you're protected, you're safe, and you have equal rights. And this occupation word is wrong to the point of absurdity. But yet, as you said, AOC keeps using it. Why? 
sounds exciting. It sounds like she's a victim. It sounds like she's mm -hmm. fighting for human rights. And it's all Jermaine made 